I've got about four messages that he wants to roll into one. And uh, so, Lord, we just thank you for your word this morning, God. I, I thank you, God, for the anointing. And Lord, I just thank you, God, you anoint me, you anoint my mouth, Lord, you'll, you'll anoint people's ears to hear what the Spirit is saying, God. Lord, I step aside and ask you to speak, speak through me, God, as your oracle. And Lord, I pray that you'll anoint this message. Lord, you'll anoint my mind, you'll anoint my mouth. And God, I, I pray that it'll bring fruit into people's lives, 30, 60, 100 fold. Amen. Well, the title is Speak with Authority. And does anybody remember a message I preached to... I don't know how long back, a few weeks, maybe a month, maybe two months, who knows. But it was a, don't let your facts mess up God's truth. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And because so many times, you know, there's facts. You know, the doctor, I go and he gives me facts, but his facts doesn't change God's truth, right? right. And his truth says, by his stripes, I was healed, 1 Peter 2.24. That's confirming Isaiah, I think, 53, where it says, by his stripes we are. And then we, that's looking to the cross. And after the cross, you see in the New Testament, 1 Peter 2, 24, it says we were. So it's finished at the cross. Right. Amen. Amen. That was free if you didn't know that. <laughs> and, but, you know, there's something else that has to happen is that you have to, uh, you have to, uh, You have to speak to some things. How many know faith is an action word? Amen. Yeah. Now you can know all the truth in the world, but if you take no action on it, it doesn't do anything. Now you, most of you have seen, heard the saga of the ongoing put my old truck back together after all the years and all the bolts and all the things and all the fun. But you know, just because I had the knowledge for a while, I didn't have the body. And I, I mean, I still ain't got much of a body, but, you know, but God's restoring it. What I'm talking about is I wasn't physically able to do a lot of things. I had all the knowledge up here, but I wasn't able to put it in action. Okay? So, just because you know the truth doesn't mean that you're actually living a faith-filled life, living your best life now, living the blessings of God. And I said, I'm not talking about Joel Osteen's because we're going to see some of the best life now. How I many of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had their best life now and they went through the fire? Yeah. How I many of Lazarus was living his best life after he came back from the dead? Yeah. Come on, are you with me? We're going to talk about some of those guys this morning, Lord willing. But I had all that, but I had to put it into action to see some fruit and some results from it, right? right. Now, you know, if you're start, when you start confessing things and speaking out in faith to things, if you're around very many secular people or any kind of weak need, wobbly need Christians, they're going to look at you funny. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You say, are you insulting me? No, if you're a weak need, wobbly need Christian, I'm telling you, it's okay. I'm going to strengthen you up for the day's so. <laughs> over. <laughs> oh Lord help me because <laughs> a lot of times there's a disconnect from what we know and what we believe and then what we say yeah. and even us well seasoned Christians sometimes we just put up with a lot of things for a long time but before we start speaking of that thing and we're going to see in the word of God it wasn't when they First, instantly said, how many of you like it when you speak faith and it instantly happens? Mm. Isn't it awesome? Yeah. But what about when it's, I call it grinding faith. <laughs> when you're standing on a precept upon precept, line upon line. You're, God, you're not a man that you can lie. You said it was so and it's so and Lord, I believe it. I'm standing firm upon this, God. You know? And it might take a few times because the enemy goes, I don't think you really believe that. Let me come over here and try to knock your legs out from under you again. Let me see what you're going to say now. You're all good. Lord, they're good in talking. You've been had them up in the shelf. Lord, you've had them protected. You've had, look at all the blessings on the Let me just go over and mess with them a little while. We'll see what they'll say. And God says, okay, 
Well, see, a lot of people think that's punishment. But see, John 10.10 10 says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah. So when God lets you go through the fire, it's not because he's punishing you. It's because he's refining you because he sees greatness inside you. And he can't put more of his gifts and callings inside you until you get, until you get through the fire and get purified. So you need to stop. You need to start looking uh, begrudgingly. You start looking at dismay at the fire and the trials that you're going through because they're meant to lift you you up higher, not push you down lower. But how you speak in the midst of the trial will determine how long you're in the fire. And I'm here to tell you, as a as a faith talking, tongue talking, fire filled preacher, there's times I've got to remind myself to engage my mouth. I'm way ahead of my message, but that's all right. <laughs> It was funny. I've been working on the old truck. and The devil, for some reason, my, my mom is going to be 77 this year. We get home like once a year, if that. I still want to get home sooner. It's just far enough to be too far. Mm. And so I, my truck is, I still have property down there, so you got to keep one vehicle down there, all the laws, and some old truck's license down there. So every two years, I go home and get it inspected, and get my plates renewed. And it cost me like 40 bucks for two years. Quite a difference between Illinois. Yeah, yeah. Where it's 100 bucks a year. <laughs> but, so I had to get the, this one is I had to get the truck up to par. The plates are out at the end of this month. So that's why I had to lay back on some of the working out and push in because I was on a deadline. And the closer the deadline got, the more crazy things happened. We fixed one thing and something else would break. I'd get that thing fixed and something else would break. And listen, I can tell you my natural life, if you were around me, a lot of times I realize you're going through things. But when you get to the level of anointing where I'm at, you just roll with stuff because the enemy is constantly rolling and you've got to decide he's not going to steal your joy. Amen. And then, yeah, there's seasons where he doesn't engage so much. But you know, usually he's trying to get me to fumble up because guess what? If he can fumble me up, he can get to you. And that's what he's really interested in. You know, if he calls me to fall, like a lot of the preachers around the world, you, people say, what big effect? Well, it would affect you, and you don't know what God has greatness inside you. Amen. So we kept on, and yesterday, I finally got it all back together. Thought we had everything done. I went to start it, and the $150 starter, it's got one of those whole high-torque starters on it. 150 bucks for a starter. That's crazy. I remember that's $30. Yeah, yeah. Guess I'm old. <laughs> Thirty bucks. But yeah, well, it locked up. The, the starter seized. Oh, if you know anything about them, so I'm looking at a new starter. So I'm banging around on it, trying to get it loose. It wasn't starting. It wasn't starting. And I've been praying and things, and uh, finally. I mean, there was a difference. My, my faith engaged. I was upset. I, I realized that it was a demonic attack. And listen, he's had them on my back. He's had them all kinds of He's tried to stop me nine minutes away. So I'm not here to give him glory this morning. What I'm trying to tell you, each time that I've overcame is whenever my expector got connected to my believer, but then it had to get connected to my mouth. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I had to start speaking the word of God to the situation. Right. So I spoke to this thing and it still didn't do nothing. <laughs> I got Pastor Tammy in there, and I spoke to it again. And I, if any of you old mechanics, you know, she, I had her trying to hit the starter where I banged on it, trying to get the Bendix loose and the brushes inside the starter. It didn't work. And so I prayed again. And, you know, I've got smarter as an old preacher. So a lot of times we depend on our own wisdom as men. And I said, Lord, what do you mean? He said, just let the voltage charge. Just put a charger on it. I know it's charged. Just put it So I did that, and... Laid hands on it again, and boy, it fired right up. Don't right. worry, this uh, story's going somewhere. And as soon as it fired up, it started making the awfulest noise I'd heard. <laughs> and it's still going a little bit. One of the, I think I got a bearing going out on one of my idler pulleys now. And then the water pump started flowing water out the weep hole. Oh, my. And it started going. And I thought, Lord, you know I have to leave today now. <laughs> And and so I got in the truck and I said, you know what? 
And I just, I literally, let, same as when you came to the front, I laid both hands up on that dashboard and I just had enough and I spoke faith. And so I drove it to Lincoln last night and then drove it all the way in here today. And you know what? I think it'll make it home just fine. And the only thing that changed was my confession of my faith. Amen. Now, yeah. listen, I know there's some things I'm going to have to repair. I'm not naive and I'm going to fix it. But also, listen, if God can fix my physical body, if he can have Moses speak to a rock and cause it to produce water, are you listening to me? Yeah. Do you really think fixing an old car is that hard for him? No. Mm -mm. Now listen, I, there's times he'll give you money to fix it. There's times he'll give you wisdom to fix it. And there's times whenever it's a demonic attack and he'll give you faith to fix it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I've told this story many years ago. I haven't told it in a long time. But there was a season in my ministry as a young minister. I wasn't even making enough to, to eat, honestly. But you know what? God still fed me. And there was a time my old truck, I was on empty for a... I was on empty and I prayed, laid hands on it. And I drove over 300 miles with that truck on empty. Wow. I believe that. Over two weeks, still ministering. And I got where God did that a lot for about a year or so. I prayed, laid hands on it. You know, sometimes I think I'd like to be that faith-filled guy again. Sometimes we get used to the cushions and the blessings of God. Are you listening? But then one day came along, and the ministry was profiting a little bit. And I'm not talking about rolling the money. I'm talking about I had enough to actually get a hot dog, you know. <laughs> and the truck was on empty. I had some money in my pocket. And I looked at the gas gauge, I looked at the gas station, and I just smiled and drove right on by. Uh -oh. I got about two miles down the road, and I was walking. Uh -oh. <laughs> and guys, I said, what's up, guys? I have been. I drove 300 miles. On, I know it's still hard to believe in your natural mind. You don't just... And I drove 300 miles on empty. Let me tell you, the gas gauge wasn't broken. I mean, it took the same... It took like, you know, 30 gallons to fill it up. It was empty, you know. It had been empty. And it worked fine after. Trust me, I did all that stuff. I wasn't trying to work up something. But he said, I gave you money, use it. <laughs> you was believing me for money, I gave it to you. I was like, but I'm leaving for gas now. He said, you got the money. <laughs> <laughs> See, but so many times we put God in a box according to our rationale. But he just said, he said, have faith and believe. And see, when you really have faith, he'll cause you to start doing some crazy things. Because let me tell you, it's not faith unless you do it in the middle of a storm when it makes no sense. That's when faith is truly tested, when you can't possibly see a way out. And it'll be something you've already been believing in, but faith really comes when you start confessing. Listen, and it's one thing, he didn't say try faith and see. He said that with your tithes and offerings. That's the first level of faith. Faith, he said, believe, and you shall receive. And so, there, listen, when you, it's all fine and dandy until, listen, like I spoke in another message, until all their facts goes against all his truths, and you've got to believe his truths. But let me tell you, there's a difference between timidly standing on it, and yet God can honor some of those. But there's another difference when you believe it so much that you speak it out with an expectation for it to change. And listen, that's all great when it changes the first time, but when you're in the fire, when you're in the trial, Come on, are you hearing me this morning? When you're Lazarus and you're dead, you think it's too late for faith. But faith doesn't come until you, listen, you keep standing it. Jesus said he wept when he came to them. And he said, oh, you the little faith. Because they said, if you would have been here when he was alive, you could have healed him. And they, listen, and that's so many times. If you would have responded the way that I thought you should have responded to the need, it would have been met. But it wasn't faith until they believed that he could take it, care of it, even out of their control, even in unseen circumstances, even in things that made no sense. I mean, he died. They'd already seen him raise people from the dead. Did you know that? And so I believe today so he's still saying, oh, you a little faith. Can you not believe what my word says? Mm -hmm. You know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 
They did exactly what God told them to do. They stood strong in their faith. And they still got tossed in the blooming furnace. We'd have been all over then. Oh God, why has Solomon forsaken me? He threw me in here to burn. You sent me to the corner. No, I don't mean that. It's just a good joke anymore. But how many times do you get in the middle of that affliction, that the middle of that circumstance, that middle of the trying of your faith where God is saying, I want to come raise you up. I want to take you to the next level. And you saw, you see is the fire around you and you go, let me out. But they had faith. And it says there was a fourth man in the fire as a, as the son of God. And the king goes, are you okay in there? The same guy that tossed him in, who was mad, because how dare they go against his rule? He's like, I saw a fourth man as the Son of God. Oh, man. And when they come out, he said, We're going to serve this God. See, because of the, what their stand in the midst of the little, literal fire of putting their God first, it changed a whole nation. A whole nation. Because they put, the, they put their faith. Well, the mouth was. When they were asked, they didn't bow. They didn't blink. They didn't shake. When they were thrown in the fire, they didn't change their position. They didn't change their talk. Listen, they had no promise that God was going to meet them in there when they knew who their God was and they were not going to bow. They were not going to break. They had their mind set. They had their spirit set before they ever entered into the fire. Amen. Listen, you're going to go through things, church. You're going to have trials and tribulations. But he said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And if you remember that, you'll be able to face anything. But what I found is a whole lot of people anymore trying to get out of everything. It starts getting a little hot over here and they dance over there. It starts getting a little hot over there and they dance over here. And then they say, well, I had faith and look what happened, Pastor. I said, well, it's not over yet. That's right. Reminds me of a young man, a young man and a young woman, a minister. And uh, his wife had left him for another woman. And he had called me and I prayed with him and the Spirit of God spoke and told him that if he would hold the line, God would bring her back and do some things. and Much more that I'm not allowed to say in public. And a year had passed or so and I was down home for about one of my yearly visits and here was this man of God not serving God anymore. And I didn't know it. I walked into the cases to get me some gas. And here was him behind the counter. And he was just scrowling and down. And I said, you ain't living for God no more. He said, no, God didn't do what he said. I said, well, you didn't either. He got real quiet. He said, how do you know? I said, the Spirit of God just told me. I said, you ain't living right. As soon as the going got tough and it didn't go the way you wanted, you threw in the towel. God gave you a promise. If you want it to happen, you get your life back there and start living it. And you said, the promise is still there. Amen. And he got a tear in his eye and he said, okay, Pastor Brian. About nine months later, I get an invitation to a wedding of his wife that had left him for the other woman who got delivered from lesbianism, got that thing broke off of her and back and they're now serving full time in the ministry. It's been a few years now. They got four beautiful little children and they're happily married and she's going around telling everybody how you can be free from the spirit of lesbianism and all those things. And it wasn't no gimmicks, nothing worked up, but he got in and he said, I'm going to serve God no matter what. Whether she comes back or not, I'm going to serve God. But he said, hey, but he started confessing the word over his wife because he still had authority as a man of God as long as he stayed in a position of authority under God. Right. Yeah. And his faith sort of coming back out his mouth. But the enemy, he thought he had him whooped because yeah. he got him to, he wasn't speaking no faith. He was trying to get him to curse God and die, you might as well say. Yeah. See, you're going to go through some things, but you need to find the promises in the word of God and start speaking them over your situation. You need to start speaking life over yourself. I'll, the Bible says, I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Mm -hmm. If you've ever been to our Broken Change Church app, you'll see that scripture come up. Did you know that? When you first open it up, when you first you go to the Android store and you download Google, Google Play, mm -hmm. download Broken Change Church, mm -hmm. 
You open the app up, the first picture that pop up, it says, I live and not die, and declare the works of the Lord. See, one night, this is what would have been five plus years now, we've since the enemy attacked me, I came back from Kenya, hadn't been able to walk, and I've had from sickness, brain, I, this man he's trying to kill me a bunch of different ways. I don't really not worth talking about. But one night, it was in so much pain. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't move. And of course, nobody knew this. I was still preaching every Sunday. And the devil, he was just, yeah, yeah. So I decided that I was going to uh, build that church and app. And I taught myself how. And if I was going to be awake, it was at least going to be beneficial. <laughs> And so I did that. But that scripture I put on there, it was just a little nudge in the devil's face. Everybody opens this app. They're going to get the same verse I'm standing on. Amen. And everybody across the world has downloaded the first thing they see is, I will live and not die, I declare the works of the Lord. Because that's been my motto for the last five years. I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. I'll declare of his goodness. But I won't stand up here and lie to you and tell you I don't go through things. I'm gonna, I'll let you know I'm going through some stuff, but the key is I'm going through it. Amen. And you see me go through one thing from another thing. And I, I've started to feel like my old truck. I maybe <laughs> feel a little bit. <laughs> kind of been the same scenario. He'd been like, but you know what the thing was? He was fronting half of that. Because when the anointing showed up, he uh, the starter, it's, it ain't acted up once since then. And if you're a mechanic, that don't happen. Yeah. It ain't even tried. It, you out there and I just hit it. Woo. The anointing showed up and it said, I'm out of here. You know, that's like when my body gets up. There's all times in the morning. I'm like this. I lay hands on that body and guess what? It straightens up. So why am I saying this? Because he didn't come to take you out of this world. He didn't come to remove you from things. He came to take you through them. But he came to take you through them to grow you into a place where you'd be fit for the master's use. But he wants to put so much glory in you, you can't even you can't even imagine. So much joy. He's got so many good things for you. Did you know that? So the blessings of the Lord maketh one rich and add no sorrow. No sorrow. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, No sorrow. No sorrow. So God wants to make the blessing of the Lord. He wants to make it you rich. That's physically, spiritually, emotionally, and financially. If you'll get your expector connected to your believer and start speaking faith-filled words out your mouth, and it's not going to add no sorrow. The only time sorrow gets added is if you let it into the batch. He'll always try to deposit. He said, here, let us have a dash of this. And what your mouth says to it matters. Come on. I got tons of scripture in the back of this stuff. You're going to have a great time reading all these notes. <laughs> you got like five pages, I think. Again, a book. But well, let's just look at some of it. Amen. Yeah. The first thing you got to believe is that Jesus has authority over everything. Yeah. Do you believe that? And do you know that his name is above every other name? I mean, I spoke a few weeks ago, you know, whenever he showed up, the demons, the legions, they're like, hey, what are you doing here? And, you know, they threw him into some pigs, and the pigs didn't want them, they jumped off a cliff. Ain't nobody putting them in no demons. That's the same way you should be. But listen, 1 John 4, 4 says, Greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. So whenever you start realizing who you are, that you are king's kid, you are a co-heir with Christ, and you have authority through him, and when you speak the name of Jesus, even the demons tremble, you're going to start acting different about some of your circumstances. Amen. You'll start speaking as one with authority. Listen, that's part of what I'm getting at. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Is because, listen, there's a difference between saying something and speaking as one with authority. I'm not asking its opinion. I'm not begging it to go. When someone comes up and they ask to be healed from sickness, James 5.15 says, Call for the elders of the church, anoint them with oil. The prayer of faith shall save the sick, and he shall raise them up. It didn't say have the preacher dance around three times. It didn't say only do it when the pastor feels faith-filled. It said, if he believes this is the word, I'll do it. So I can speak as one with authority because he gave me the authority right there in his word to anoint him with oil and pray over them and he will raise them up. 
So when they come up, I curse sickness. I command it to go. You say, how can it? Because I'm a co heir with Christ. And he gave me the authority to do that and pray the prayer of faith and get rid of that thing. You've got to stop begging these things to go and stop begging God for something you already got. That's right. He finished the work at the cross. Amen. Now there's time. Listen, I've learned a lot over the last 20 some years. I'm a lot smarter about all this than I was. And some of the stuff I wish I'd have known when I was beating my head against a brick wall. <laughs> begging God for this and begging God for that. Not realizing I had it. Not realizing who I was in Christ. Not realizing what authority I had as a believer of the Most High God. And listen, but it's one thing to know it. But it's another thing to start speaking it. You know? When I spoke to that old truck yesterday, I didn't ask the devil's opinion. I didn't plead God. I said, Lord, you said whosoever can have whatsoever they have faith and believe. Lord, you said the blessings of God make a one rich and add no sorrow. And God, if you can make water flow out of a rock, you can make a truck work. Lord, I command this thing to come in line with the word of God. You say, man, I heard you pray like for people in their deathbed. It takes the same faith. Yeah. It's the same authority. You've got to realize you have the same authority that Christ had. You're his ambassador in this world. People, are, uh, people have, have a very high opinion of Christ anymore because we're not emulating the true power and authority that he gave us. They were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority and not as scribes. See, scribes are ones that have all the information. Did you know that? The church has a lot of scribes. We don't have a lot of people that talk with authority. When you know something, you know it. Listen, let me tell you something else, brother, sister, honey. There ain't no gray areas in the Word of God. There's a bunch of cowardly pastors that don't have enough authority to tell you what the Word of God says and explain it to you so it can, because they're afraid, well, you're going to run this way or run that way. And if you're trying to listen, if you're trying to, if you've got a question on something and it's sin to 99% of the people around you or 80% of the people around you, it's sin. Quit trying to justify it. Get off the edge where you're trying to live how close you can be in the world and get your butt back over it belongs, got underneath the anointing of God, the righteousness of God, and follow after him, and then you have the blessings of God. Amen. It's always hot by the line. That's where the fire's at. <laughs> Big smile. <laughs> Brother Todd said, I'm not mad at you. I'm just telling you the truth. <laughs> True story. And Jesus came and spake unto him, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Matthew 20, 18. Then he says, I don't know later on in that verse, he says, He gives us all power and authority. So you need to start realizing you have all. If you really believed you had the same authority as Jesus Christ, how would you talk to the circumstances in your life today? What would you what, what would your confession be to those things in your life, right? Now listen, I'm not talking about the blab it and grab it silly nonsense. I've seen people that are supposedly in the faith movement. There's one. There, there's, I remember this one. This story was told to me by a very dear man of God, and he was there, and he had some very faith-filled uh, older pastors, and they were looking to uh, raise up some young ministers to take over their their church, and so they came and had with them and. They had a very nice home and nice things, but they'd been in the ministry like 55 years. They'd served God with all their heart and they'd stood in faith. They didn't start off. Those people have no idea usually what most pastors give. And so this young couple came in and the, the wife they saw was down there in their floor had both hands on their carpet just praying. And they said, what are you doing? She said, oh, I'm believing for this carpet. They said, oh, we'll believe the God to get you some carpet like that. She said, no, I want this carpet in this house. And they said, well, we're not willing to sell, but we can believe you get your own. And the lady got a little more belligerent and said, no, I've got faith to believe. I'm laying hold of this very right here, da, da, da. And the, they said, he said, the, the couple looked at each other, and the husband said, well, you go work for 55 years, serve God, you may get it too. Now, bless God, I think we're done here. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's not that God didn't want them to have the nice stuff. They just didn't want to get their own. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are believing for stuff that's not theirs. You've got to believe for stuff that's yours. Your stuff is promised in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Listen, it's not money that's the root of all evil. It's the love of it. Mm -hmm. 
God, God uses money. Look, he, he, he was hanging out with the tax collectors, the ones that were the most vile back then. He always wanted the money. He went right up to them and got them saved. It's not about the money. It's about the heart. Right. I don't know who that's for, but that's free. you got to believe that his name is above every other name. Ephesians 1.21, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Somebody look at him and say, every name. Every name. That is name. That is yeah. Not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Do you think that covers it? That His name is above every other name. So listen, there was times when I was a young man before I could quote Scripture. If you really need to find the correct promises for the applications you're looking for, you need to study to show yourself to prove, to work and rightly divide the Word of God. And you need to find the Word of God so you can start speaking to these things. Come on. But when I was young, I didn't have all those young ministers, but I did latch on to this one simple thing. Jesus' name was above every name. So when, the, when things came in like a flood, I would just go, Jesus! I sound really deep. <laughs> Jesus! But you know what? The devil understood that language. He stopped. He backed off. I can't tell you how many times at the mines when people are doing stuff, I respirate on my face. I'm going around, Jesus! All of a sudden, like a bomb went off. They all just start scattering like little scary things. Why? Because his name was above every other name. His name was above sickness. It's above anger. It's above poverty. Come on. His name was above every other name. But listen, it only works when you speak as one with authority. You have to realize who you are. When you start realizing who you are, listen, I picked this up from Dave Ramsey years ago. He's got a few things I don't agree with quite so much anymore, but I used to teach his classes years and years ago. And when bills would show up in the mail, I'd call them cheetahs. That cheetah's chasing me. Cheetah! <laughs> nah, we, I don't believe in debt myself personally. We don't live that way. The only cheetahs come is with monthly bills for the church and a few things at home, and those are things we have to have. So, you know, But they're still cheetahs. But you know what? Jesus' name is above the cheetah. Amen. Amen. You know, a lot of people, they don't understand how it works in the ministry and church. Listen, I remember what it was like when I knew how much I'd get paid every week and you could try to budget. Let me tell you, when you really get stretched to faith and get thrown in the fire, you ain't going to know what's coming in, how much is coming in. You're just going to know that God is faithful. He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. He didn't say those that lays around depending on somebody else to do it. He says those are diligently, every day, are applying their faith. They're putting a demand upon the Word of God with faith, with authority. You know, every day I put it, so I don't have to beg God for it. There's certain things He told me He'd just take care of that I have to expect Him to do. And there's other things that He tells me to put a demand upon. You know, when all the bills for the church every month, I'm like, Lord, you said whosoever, and I've got a certain amount that I'm believing for, and we're getting inching closer to that amount through the years. And you know what? I don't tell him how to do it. See, a lot of pastors get in trouble because they want to go beat the sheep because they think the sheep are the source. <laughs> now, God does use the sheep, and God wants sheep to be obedient to sow into his house. But even if the sheep are disobedient, they're not tying the God of the universe's hands. Amen. He's, had, he's had people come through town to drop a check here and drop a check there to pay the bills. He's had stuff come through the mail because I quit telling him how to do it a long time ago. I just put a demand upon the Word of God. And let me tell you, I don't go, well, what's going to happen next? See, you, that's not faith. Faith is, Lord, I thank you that you're paying this. And God, I thank you for delivering it. God, I put an expectation and demand upon it. Lord, I declare right now that those bills are paid in Jesus' name. Amen. See, that, I wasn't asking his permission, was it? I was speaking as one with authority because guess what? I've got authority as a man of God. You know, I've done some crazy stuff. Pastor Billy got me in a bunch of stuff early on. I've done since then. I'll never forget one time we were out cruising around. We were working. And we we're going somewhere. And anyways, the, there was a tornado headed for Salem. And he, he checked it out and it was headed for the church. He said, come on, let's go out here. So I go out there with him as a young, naive minister. I'm like, what's he going to do now? You know, I was an old great man of power and faith. And so we're standing there in the parking lot and we're watching a tornado come right at us. And I'm looking, are we going to leave or what's the plan? 
What's the plan? <laughs> what is the plan, boss? He said, he said, we're gonna speak to this thing. I said, I was thinking, can't we do that from the truck? <laughs> Old man of great faith and power. But something rose up in me. He said, listen, if we don't stop it, it's going to take out the whole place God showed me. And so we spoke to it, and it jumped the town over, and then he felt bad for months because it got to town. He said, we're going to have, he said, he said, I learned something. We've got to stop telling it to go this way or that way. He said, we've got to tell it to dissipate. Amen. Amen. See, because you got power in your words. I can tell you five times since I've been, it happened down south after this, after that down home too, but five times I know there's been tornadoes coming that I know for a fact were hitting, shaking, and I've spoken and it dissipated. Mm -hmm. Some of you have been there on the occasions. Mm -hmm. Listen, that's because there's authority. When my wrist broke, snapped the other day, I didn't go, Lord, please touch it. If you be thy will, heal it. I said, I command you to come in alignment with the word of God right now in the name of Jesus. Be healed. See the difference in the tone? Mm -hmm. One speaks with authority. One is trying to ask permission. One's trying to get begging somebody to do something. You don't have to beg for something that's already yours. That's right. So many times we think we're bound by our paycheck. God's bigger than your paycheck. Amen. <laughs> Listen, oh Holy Ghost. <laughs> Listen, everybody in this room has a bigger paycheck than I have, but I'll challenge you to see if you want more blessed than me. Amen. Amen. I'm not trying to be arrogant. Please don't hear that. But are you here? I, I promise you, everybody in this room makes a bigger paycheck than I make. Not a doubt in my mind. And we're blessed. Can I tell you how God does it all? Honestly, I can't. We've moved into our new house. The bills double. We got more money left over every month. <laughs> I don't know how God does it. But as Brother Todd Bailey says, I don't know how a cow eats brown cow eats green grass and makes white milk, but I know that God does it. Yeah. I know that he said that if I would pay my bills, he'd open a window of heaven. If I pay my tithes and offerings, both, and he'd open a window of heaven and pour the blessing. Okay. Does that mean the devil don't constantly try to show up and chew into my blessings? Of course he does. But I don't let him. Amen. I take authority over him. Amen. Now sometimes I admit, he get, but listen, his job is to wear down the saints. He wants you to change your confession. Did you know that? And there's so many times that I catch myself because I'm in, you know, you ever, anybody here ever resisted pain? I mean, like high, high tolerance of pain. Yes. You kind of, you, if you don't, if you're not under the anointing, you don't think right and you, you just get wore down. You don't make really great decisions sometimes. You ever realize that? Do you think there's a reason why the enemy does that to people, the faith? But listen, he, the Bible says he can't keep it up forever. No season lasts forever. It says, by his stripes, we were healed. Past tense, right? But when you're under those things, when you go, if some of you have been on an onslaught, you know, some of it maybe you brought on yourself, maybe some of it the enemy's bringing a warfare against you, right? But his thing is he wants you to change your confession or at least not open your mouth. Because see, when you get tired enough, you stop opening your mouth. Come on, are you hearing me in the church this morning? I gotta get me a drink. So his name was above every other name. He's with you in the fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he's with you. Listen. How many areas ever waited for God to do something then it looks like it's just dead and over? And then you thought that, you know, listen, some stuff he wants dead. But I'm talking about things that are of God. How I many you know Lazarus, he died. They said it's over. He wept. Listen, it's not my job to decide when God does something. See, that's what they made the mistake with Lazarus. I'm still resisting some things in my body, but my job isn't to decide when and where. My job is to believe and have faith. 
and then get up every day expecting my miracle. And if it doesn't come to fruition today, if the enemy's still resisting me, listen, Daniel said, where have you been? He said, I was up hold four days. Satan interfered with me, hindered me from coming to you. Listen, if you don't think Satan ain't got a warfare trying to hinder you, especially when you're being becoming a man, woman of faith, when you're going through a trial, when you're getting going through the fire and God's about to pour out the glory of God even more in your life, you're sadly mistaken. He will do everything he can to hold that up. And one of the best tricks he gets is wearing you down to you stop do you shut your mouth? He doesn't care if you believe the information inside. He just doesn't want you to open your mouth and speak it as one with authority. Come on. And listen, what, what I'm getting at this morning is that's when it takes the most faith is when you've been at it a while. That's when it takes the most faith is when you've been at it a while and you've not seen all the changes that you want to see. Come on, church, are you hearing me this morning? You, you've been speaking it and that. And, and God, I believe, you just want me to come along this morning and encourage you to not grow weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap. But he also wanted me to come along and tell you you're going to have to open your mouth and speak as one with authority. Mark 11, 22 through 24, famous verses around here. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. Now, faith means you're confident that he's going to do the things that you can't see. He's going to bring them to pass. Amen. His promises are yes and amen. Right? Mm -hmm. And so, did he say, uh, did he say, have well wishing in God? Uh, to be uh, hopeful, God hopeful, confidently anticipating maybe, but not a worldly hopeful. But he said, have faith in God. He said, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. And see what happens as the enemy comes in and tries to steal your authority. He doesn't even care if you speak. He just wants you to not speak as one with authority. Because when you have doubt in your heart, you don't speak as one with authority. Come on, are you hearing me, the church? He's doing his very best to get you not to speak as one with authority. He, he'll even let you speak some stuff. But, you know, if you don't fully believe it, what's the harm in it, right? At least that's how he looks at it. That's better than you getting a hold of it and realizing who you are in Christ. A joint heir with Jesus Christ. I'm a son of the Most High God. I'm full of power and the Holy Ghost and fire. I'm a tongue-talking, devil-stomping man of God. I come to kick sickness, poverty, and all those things straight up out of here. I came to see people healed, set free, and delivered. I will not shut up. I will not back down. I will not bow down because I'm a child of the Most High God. And I have authority in my words when I speak to something it moves because he gave me all authority, not some authority. And when you start realizing who you are and start talking as one with authority, you'll be surprised the universe starts listening to your voice because it was the sound of God that spoke the universe into existence. It was the sound of God that spoke you into existence. It was the sound you released unto God that saved you unto him. He said, by your mouth, your confession, you are saved. So there is something with your voice. And when you start getting in the same unity, on the same key, in the same DNA, is Jesus and you start speaking with authority things start moving they start shaking they're not just words you say they're part of who you are and when I speak to something I expect it to move I'm not hopeful I'm not going to see what happens I expect you'll say what if I get up the next day and it's still there I expect what if I get up the next day and it's still there I expect and I'm going to keep expecting until it moves Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. What you believe inside you, what word of God you have, you've got to move it to a place of realizing you have all authority through Christ. Amen. If God be for you, who can be against you? Those are great words to say in a sermon, but when Monday rolls around, devil tries to hop up on your shoulder, all hell's coming against you, and you say, what was that again? Oh God, why have thou forsaken me? <laughs> Pastors go, Lord, pray, open their eyes. They can see greater those are with them than those that are against them. I don't see nothing. <laughs> go back and look again. Come on. 
Listen, I'm not preaching theory. There's a reason. We all go through seasons, but I'm coming to encourage you to start living it out. Start encouraging yourself. Read the scriptures. Find out who you are in Christ and start speaking with authority that thing. Listen, there's times that people will think you're crazy. That's okay. I can't tell you how many times I prayed for things and they'll say, well, did you really think your prayers did that? I said, I don't know. You watch and find out. <laughs> if it's God, I ain't got to prove it. Right. It's not about me. It's about the one in me. And it wasn't my things I was praying for. It was His Word. There's a whole lot of people praying soulless prayers that are not in the Word of God that He's not responding to. But when I'm speaking His Word, I'm speaking His authority, I have all of heaven behind me that's coming against it to make it happen. Amen. Listen, I don't have commands of legions of angels, but when I speak the Word of God, there's legions of angels watching over His Word to perform it. Right. Amen. We're about to go to the next part. The Bible says, if I decree a thing, it'll be so. I like to add in for people that's got all wacky on this stuff that lines up with the Word of God. Lots of people have tried to decree a thing. Lord, I know that's my wife. I know that's my husband. I decree it'll be so, God. I say, ain't got no more than a man in the moon. So I said, I've been trying to work on you. And you've been running around like a chicken with your head cut off. But Lord, what's that happen when i got to learn to, to clean up after myself? It was me and we need two dishes, a knife, and a fork, and a table to sit at. The ladies need all the other fixes that come with it. You've got to get ready for the other half to come. Ladies, your men like to eat. You know, <laughs> they, like, they like a clean house. They're not trying to, God's not dealing you with those things just for you. <laughs> oh, Lord, how am I getting here? <laughs> I'm just telling you, but you can take authority over the dishes. <laughs> Yeah, with some action. <laughs> oh, glory. <laughs> you can have faith that God can help you overcome. <laughs> hey, listen, I, all joking aside, there were some times in my life that the dishes were the mountain. <laughs> Everything else that the enemy had thrown at me, all the other stuff that was piling at home, and I came home and there was the pile of dishes. I'm like, that's it. I know I'm the only one that's ever felt that way. But praise God, He helped me overcome the dishes. <laughs> helped me overcome the dirty clothes. He helped become a man of stood. Listen, I couldn't be where I'm at today with the gifts and God of callings of God and anointing upon my life if I hadn't learned to overcome the dishes. Amen. Now. I freely admit that Pastor Tammy does most of them anymore, but I still know how. <laughs> it's just not been that easy for me to stand up. But if it was needed, I would do it. Amen. But uh, I'm so thankful he lets me be up here on Sunday morning. Amen. This is an awesome thing. Amen. Amen. But listen, Job 22, verse 28. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. The light shall shine upon thy ways. Listen, when you start decreeing the things that line up the Word of God, He's going to shine. So let the glory of God start shining upon your life. Some of you need to start decreeing, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. Come on. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed going out. I am blessed of the Most High God. I'm going to grow in wisdom and favor and stature with God and man. But see, the key, most people want to grow with man first. But you've got to grow with God first, and that's hard work, honey. Amen. But if you want to really grow, you're going to start growing in wisdom and favor and stature with God and man. He's going to see if you're diligent. He's going to see if you're faithful. He's going to test to see if you're faithful. He's going to keep pouring it out. He's going to see, what do they, when I squeeze them, what comes out their mouth? <laughs> if it's cussing, you got a lot of work to do. <laughs> if it's faith and you're speaking faith to that thing, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And uh, every tongue that rises against me in judgment, I shall condemn because I have the authority of the word of God. Amen. How dare you put your hands on a man of God. Amen. <laughs> I am blessed going in and blessed going out. But Lord, I'm going to love them through it. I'm going to show them what love looks like. Come on. You're going to have to start decreeing some things. 
My body shall function according to the word of God. I command this body to come in line with the word of God. Every day when I get out of bed and it says I don't want to work, I said I didn't ask your opinion today. Amen. It's just like yesterday. I command you to work in the name of the Lord. Amen. You'll say, well, pastor, you're still dealing with stuff. Well, yeah, I'm not in heaven yet. And until I make it all the way home, he's going to try to wear me out. But I've got good news. I read the book. And we win. But i got even better news. We've got all authority over him. In the name of Jesus, he trembles. You need to start realizing who you are in Christ. You need to change your confession coming out your mouth. You might have all the head knowledge. You might have heart knowledge. But it's time all that starts coming. And you may even be speaking it. But I want to encourage you to step up to a place where you're speaking it with authority. Amen. Lord, when I, when I go to God, I don't ask His opinion. Lord, if it be your will, would you pay the bills this month? God, it's short and we just don't know what to do. And you know that one brother so-and-so and, -so and sister so-and-so. I don't pray. I said, Lord, this is your idea. You told me to found this church and you said that you would supply all our needs according to your riches and glory. So put a, I put a demand upon your word. You said, who serves and what's her asking? Faith and believe. And you said you would supply. You said you'd bring all the stores into the storehouse. So Lord, I put a demand that the storehouse will be full and Jesus name and I don't go around and ask anybody else's opinion I don't tell them what I prayed it's just when they bring me the offering I have an expectation sometimes it don't live up yeah. and I go okay I'll have to pray some more and I go back in my prayer closet and I say how dare you devil get your hands off the money I Lord right now I commanded to come and the next week I go there was nobody here where did all that come from Amen. I'm not playing am I playing A lot of that's because you guys have started learning that God's faithful. But I want to tell you, He wants you to start loosening your mouth. He wants you to start decreeing some things. I don't even care if it sounds crazy. If your body ain't working, now listen, don't get greedy. I want a new job. I want da, 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 da. You know, you want God's will. He's got plans for you. They're His plans, not your plans. Right. And if you'll get in line with His plans, you can start speaking authority. Listen, I didn't say God didn't want you to have a good job, but I said, he, listen, he is more interested in your in your eternal future than he's more interested in all those things. But he wants you to be blessed upon earth. Right. He wants you to make you a walking billboard of the goodness of God. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Here's for somebody. When sin starts trying to climb, climb right around back to a door, you reckon, remember you've got all authority over it. And you say, listen, that guy don't live here no more. I've changed houses and I've shut that door in Jesus' name. And you got to rebuke you and you get on out of here. And you don't tell nobody else nothing about you know about me. I command you to go back to the pits of hell where you belong. Hey, that covenant I had with you was broken in Jesus' name. You don't think sin will come sniffing around? Well, how do you think it's says seven or more will come with that one if they find a house empty? They're just praying you're dumb enough to leave your house empty. Don't you dare leave that house empty. You keep filling it every day with the Word of God, with the Spirit of God. And when He comes knocking, you take authority over it. Let me tell you, when you leave here today, if you get nothing else today, I want you to realize that you're a son, you're a daughter of the Most High God. You're co-heirs with Christ. And He had all authority and that authority He gave you. And you've got authority over the world and everything He's throwing at you. And you need to start speaking it as so. I promise you, something's going to change. If you notice the atmosphere changed when I started taking authority in here, some stuff you were dealing with, you started feeling like it was possible all of a sudden. Do you imagine how much more possible it would be when your mouth starts declaring? Yep. Amen. Glory. Oh my, it's still early. And I got lots of time left from all the other weeks. <laughs> <laughs> no. Honestly, I'm I'm done. I'm done this morning. I pray you're encouraged. I pray you leave here ready to swing out over hell on a corn stalk and spit in the devil's eye. I pray you just feel like, you listen, 
Everybody else was scared to death of Goliath. But David knew who his God was. He knew where his authority was. It wasn't in him. It was through God in him. And he was able to go face that man, knock him out with a sling stone and cut him his head off with his own sword. He and David said, you come at me and all these things, I come at you with the name of the Lord. When these trials come, you say, listen, I come at you with the name of the Lord. You know, I can't stop uh, any of you those as your pastor. I would, I would man, I'd love to. Listen, it, it, it hurts me to see you all go through stuff. Just in case you didn't know that. I can't stop you from getting thrown in the, every fire. I can't. I can't even stop you if, if, if God wanted to take you all the way to the dead, but I've had got to raise some back and some he kept. <coughs> but I can tell you that if I'll teach you who you are in Christ, you'll never face another, another circumstance, another fiery trial the same way again. And some of you, maybe this is old hat, but you know what? I think sometimes we have to be reminded who we are in Christ. Amen. We need to be reminded of who we are. We need to start speaking some things. There was a season years ago when I was really, I learned a lot of this stuff fresh and new, and I almost called myself the confession police, you know, because what you confess you have. And, you know, listen, how many know you can have fun? There's a difference between having fun. But let me tell you, when you start talking about, when you start talking to the things, you need to be sure of who you are and sure of what the Word of God says. And let me tell you, if you don't really know what the Word of God says, guess what you won't be sure? <coughs> but when you know what the Word of God says, you'll be sure when you speak to it. If there be anybody here that doesn't know Jesus today and you want to get to know Him or you're backslidden, meaning you once served God but you know you're not now, if that be you, just raise your hand and I'll pray with you. Going once. I see that hand. Amen. I see those. Just repeat after me. Church, let's pray with them. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe you died on the cross with me on your mind. And I believe you went down to hell and whipped Satan and got the keys of death, hell, and the grave and rose again on the third day so that I can be free. Today I ask you to wash me clean of all my sins. And I come out of agreement on everything and anything that's not of God or from God. And I ask the Holy Spirit to come in and clean house. And today, I declare Jesus is Lord over my life. Glory, well, thank you for coming today. I pray you got something out of today's uh, ramblings. Uh, come back next week. You have there's no I don't know what it'll be, and neither do you, but it'll be good. <laughs> Praise God, Sister Deb. Would you come dismiss us in prayer this morning? Father, we thank you for the fresh rain of word that you've brought forth to us, that we will take it and meditate on it and let it soak in. Lord, as we go through this week, if we go through any trials or any fires, let us not be discouraged but encouraged because we have the authority. We are a king's kid, and we have the authority to speak to it with the word of God. Lord, I ask that you guide and direct us and help us that no weapon formed against us will prosper because... Jesus is over everything. It is the name of Jesus that we call upon and that we speak for. And Lord, we just thank you for what you've done. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.